Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back in the Bragoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, another game in the Bragoon. This game was actually captured on stream the other night, a solo battleship experience, and I wanted to, to put it up for a few reasons. Number one, it's a great replay, 230, 240k damage, high caliber confederate, you know, all the medals. But number two, and more importantly, it teaches us the importance of reading the mini-map and not being a useless battleship player. Uh, I see so many battleship players either with none of their health or all of their health, etc. And there are points in this game where I will say I play a little passively, but you have to, to understand the circumstances. So right off the bat, we spawn on the right, so we're going to go ahead and angle out here. We, we are lucky that a destroyer spawned on our side, so we do have spots. And I will say this destroyer played fairly well given the circumstances. The game mode is capture the base, so he has no objectives other than to spot and torp. Uh, he can capture the base, but in domination, he should try and go for the capture points. But because Wargaming refuses to give us domination a lot on this map, I, I guess it's 50-50, but because they think that capture the base is a super fun playlist, um, this, this DD has no other objectives right now, which honestly allows a lot of destroyers to, to play poorly and sometimes do well doing so. Uh, getting completely behind the enemy and flanking them can work in some situations, and I think it does. Uh, for RDD in this case, but in most circumstances, I would say 80% of the time, it, it does your team nothing. Now, if you are like me, you pay attention to the mini-map, and if you'll, you'll see that all three ships that spawn in the middle, and even one from our left flank, is coming to this side. For, for what reason, I have no idea. Now, like we mentioned, Two Brothers is one of those unique maps where I, if, you know, if you're not comfortable going up the middle, that is more of an advanced play, and it does work out if done correctly. Um, you can see me in-game now. I, I noticed it. I'm like, why are we all over here? I already have this position secured. The enemy is not pushing aggressively, so why send six and now seven ships to the side if you look at the mini-map here? Paying attention to the mini-map is something you have to do. Paying attention to the mini-map can allow you to see broadsides or ships you know, that have your broadside that you may not be able to see when you're looking down the periscope. That's part of the reason I use overview camera. Um, but also, just it allows you to see what is developing in the game. We have an excellent right push here, you know, right side push on the eastern side of the map, but they're kiting. Pushing into a kite is a losing play most of the time. And again, these are all situational circumstances. If I get, you know, nine potatoes on the enemy team, and I know that Mr. Jammer is not, he was actually, I think, stream sniping. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I've had a lot of stream snipers come back. Ayub, I know his, he's, he's one who's really guilty, but I, I hate it when people are like, you don't get stream snipe. Well, I, I do. Um, now, again, I'm not exactly sure, and it doesn't really matter uh, in this circumstance. I am in a position to be shot, so I'm going to be shot, but because of our angle here, we are allowed to turn away. So, bringing it back to that point, pushing into this kite, I would probably already be half health at this point, but because of our position, we have a double fire, we can put it out, we pop our engine boost, and we're going to go ahead and get out of here. What is the point of me still being here, right? We're just pushing into kiting ships, farming damage. Now, I do get a, a, a lucky fire there, I guess. It's not really lucky. Um, and utilizing HE and French battleships, or any battleship really, going to net you great results. I hate when battleship players refuse to switch to HE, especially in ships like the Bragone and the Montana. You just don't understand the game to its fullest. Uh, trying to to saturate superstructure at 15, 16 kilometers of angled ships, you're going to get maybe 10K max, unless it's like a GK or... Uh, you know, a Montana or an American ship with good superstructure health. You're just kind of wasting your time. Uh, but we go ahead and turn around, and we'll actually notice this Alaska is in the middle. And this guy could have been a huge problem if he played it potentially a little bit better. He was alone and overwhelmed by a lot of ships. So I, you know, in this situation, I probably don't, you know, probably wouldn't put him as much blame on him as I would, you know, a few other teammates, uh, you know, if I were on the enemy team. We go ahead and switch to the AP because he is broadside, but he actually does uh, a decent job in angle up. If I were him, though, I would have kept backing up to that to that curve, uh, but he doesn't, and we're just going to farm him and get a nice little damage total off of him. So again, switching to the HE, and we do not have AL Dunkey as a commander, which allows us to have that switch, that shell switch perk, whatever it's called. Um, which would, you know, is, is tremendously helpful in a ship like the Bragone with only 15-inch guns. And I say only 15-inch guns. Um, these guns are more than enough. I have Devstruck Yamatos. I have Devstruck in Alaska at 17 kilometers. I think I put that as a YouTube short. These guns abuse cruisers. They wreck battleships. 
Um, there, and there's 12 of them. Uh, so I, I know that some people are scared and they think they have to have Yamato to overmatch everything, but that's just an excuse from poor battleship players. Now, that's not to say the Yamato is not a good battleship. It's an excellent battleship. Um, but it's just, I find it very boring at this point in my, you know, warships career. It, I, I know if I go out in the Yamato with, with one or two teammates that I can just abuse most things. Um, but anyway, we have been getting a lot of fires on this Alaska. We're actually kiting out now to remove angle. The Alaska did get a good broadside, but he didn't get the best grouping or, or dispersion on it. So we were saved by a little bit of that. And now we have the, the results of our team. You can see we, we are in a wash here. The enemy pushed hard on, on their right side and we pushed hard on our right side. So if I were a, you know, a poor player, I would continue the push on the right side. But because I, <laughs> I understand game flow and I know that our base could be captured as this destroyer was spotted on this side, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I, I'm returning to this side and trying to eliminate a few of these ships. Now, unfortunately, this is the part of the game where I play it a little bit passive, but that's because this destroyer is over here. Now, this shot I thought was going to be a little bit better, but Dispersion said no. We got a Citadel on the first one, uh, but we could not complete uh, the Dev Strike there on that Mino. And that Mino actually ends up playing it pretty well and, and being, uh, you know, a great help to his team. So again, we do have this Alaska here, and this Alaska, I think, did radar uh, that Shima, but because of that Shima's position or whatever destroyer it is, I don't quite remember in the moment, um, we can't just charge into these cruisers. Also, charging into a Colbert with 32 millimeter plating is not the best. I really hate the Colbert with its increased maneuverability, I guess, uh, and 32 millimeter plating. Sometimes they are hard to punish. Now, a lot of Colbert players play the ship in the most useless fashion by playing it towards the back of the map. This guy's being aggressive, which is actually a little bit more dangerous to us, if I'm being honest. Uh, now, number one, I don't want to get spammed. Number two, I don't want to die to this destroyer because I know that this game is going to come down to kind of, you know, us being influential on the game. Now, like we mentioned, this is me playing a little passive. Um, I could have turned back in here, but we just didn't know where this destroyer was until these torps pop up. Now we can see that the destroyer is probably around the Colbert with the angle of those torps. He could come out and torp me though. Um, I'm going to be honest, sometimes I, I feel like as a CC, I, I play a little more passive than I should because some people go out of their way to target me. Now, this is an unfortunate shot, but actually that floater there on the end, which some people would say is bad RNG, actually gets the Citadel because the Colbert beached. This next shot, however, is a little frustrating. But guys, this is battleship play. A lot of people always complain about RNG and battleships, and that was pretty terrible RNG. Also, considering we got two bounces, which is just the Colbert, but the previous shot wouldn't have been a Citadel, or potentially wouldn't have been a Citadel, unless he beached, and that floater on the end got the Citadel. So as Battleship players, we know RNG is the worst thing in the game. I hate it. Um, Overpen should do more damage. We know that a, sh a, sh a Honda Civic-sized shell flying through a ship is going to do more than 1,000 damage, but it is just the game we play. I still get dev strikes. I feel like they're a little less rare, but that's probably because of the increase in concealment of mana, et cetera. I just, I'm tired of battleship players complaining while, you know, bow tanking uh, into oblivion and not understanding the game at all. Now, like we mentioned, this is part of the game where I'm, you know, I'm playing a little bit passive, but uh, we had to due to the circumstances with the Shima being in the game. Also, we have utilized some of our health. We have taken shots from our friendlies. And our, like we mentioned, that Shima and actually a friendly battleship are now in the enemy base. So the enemy has a decision to make. And that is either push through to our base or return to their base. Now, we do get a nice shot on this Yamato. Unfortunately, we had the HE loaded because he was bow tanking. He does turn back broadside. And this is a part where I was actually a little bit frustrated just with... I think my decision making or the circumstances because we're going around this island here and this Yamato's slowly going around this island. I use auto aim and I should have just waited the five or six seconds here um, to take this shot. We, I think we do get a, a, you know, a few, yeah, yeah. Now that was not all us, but uh, I think another Alaska or somebody shot, but we absolutely drill that Yamato. I probably could have got a dev strike um, if I just waited, but we went ahead and took the shot and the results are, uh, are <laughs> are seen on screen. So 150k, one kill, four citadels, and nine fires. Um, so we'll just pause for a moment. This next part of the game is a little bit boring. The Mino and the Montana return to the base and defend their base fairly well. That Shima actually went up the middle, which is a good play by him, but also uh, a play which confused me. So now we are on full offensive, but in the meantime, the lessons we've learned, paying attention to the minimap, shell selection type, and battleship positioning and or repositioning. Um, so those are kind of the, the lessons of this game. If you've watched this far, thank you. Make sure to give the video a like, it does help. 
Um, this mino gum's detected and then undetected and then detected again. I don't know why the spotting mechanic should. When I'm detected, it's three seconds, which is what the spotting mechanic is. But for that, it felt like he was detected for less than a second. I don't know. We know that there's a few bugs in the game, uh, but I'm. In the moment, it's it's easy to complain about it, but you know everyone experiences them. So just sitting there moaning 24/7 is just not what I'm gonna do. But uh, again, I'm not a battleship main, so <laughs> just kidding. Love you guys. Love my battleship mains. We could also take this time to give a little message to our cruiser and destroyer mains, and especially our carrier mains. Guys, do your freaking job. If I'm sitting here preaching to battleship mains to shoot at appropriate targets, not you know sit there and bow tank and be a useless battleship player. This is a message to my cruiser mains, shoot destroyers, don't farm damage, don't kite at the back of the map. Destroyer players, spot for your battleship mains, take out enemy destroyers, um, and carrier mains, do your freaking job of spotting those destroyers. Uh, nothing is more frustrating as a battleship player for, for a team that doesn't want to um, doesn't want to, to do their job and, and try and support the battleship. Everyone wants the max damage, um, but, but nobody wants to do the things which are gonna earn, earn you more XP, which is shooting destroyers, getting capture points, etc. Um, now here we are in a little bit of a tricky spot. Our, our Shima did go down to, to their Shima, but the game is tied now, so I'm gonna try and do as most the most amount of damage as possible. I'm probably gonna go down in the back of my head, but we have a decent, uh, you know, uh, we're ahead on points here because of the point um, influx that was stopped by our friendly Shima. And also we, we still have a lot of health, and that is the point and, and purpose of angling early game, etc. is because now I can kind of waste my health for example. Not waste it, but I can push in here and take two or three Shima Torps as we hit the Montana there for a nice superstructure. Go ahead and switch to the HE um, and 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 uh, get the Confederate Medal as well. Uh, this Montana player, I've seen his name before, he's a decent player, but uh, just unfortunately the Montana is not going to beat the Burgon in this situation. Yeah, he could probably take a gun, but with the amount of health I have um, and the, the HE and fire chance that the HE is going to do, and this is a perfect example of switching to the HE. We don't get the most amount of damage, but we get a fire here, and either he, he puts out one fire and gets the, the chance of a double fire, or he lets that single fire tick. So sometimes uh, when I'm you know, facing a player that I know they know what they're doing, I'll just let a single fire go because I know that they're going to let that tick. Um, and then if they put it out, I'll, I'll relight them. But the Shima is actually spotted from radar, I'm guessing, from the Alaska in the middle. We get a terrible RNG salvo on the rear turret, but then a good one on the front turret. And we're telling our team to shoot it. This Mino actually placed himself fairly well, our friendly Mino here on the right, um, and I don't think the Shima saw him, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and take the blind fire here as we, we do take a, a chunky salvo, but again, this is the, the HP that I, you know, I can play with. Um, I This is my fun HP. And Shima pops up, we lead a shot with the front turrets there, thanks to our quick reload of the Burgon, and down goes the Shima. Good night, thanks for playing. But in the meantime, this Montana has lost most of his health uh, due to that fire, and I think he actually just put out that fire as well, so. We're just going to keep the HE loaded. Uh, we knew that he wasn't going to beat us in this situation. Now, he's in a tough spot. The Montana is not the easiest ship to play. His team kind of fell apart around him. But we do lose a turret, um, and I go ahead and repair it here kind of out of just because the game's over. We have four ships to there, too, and this Alaska is pushing this Mino with the Mino's broadside. So down goes the Mino. Probably uh, should have been dead there, but uh, the, the our friendly Mino gets him. And now it is just this Montana. So he, you know, nothing more he could do. His team kind of... I guess maybe through it, but because of our decisions, our positions, and our ability to manage and tank damage, as well as dish out, dish out damage, we have essentially kind of forced our team into this winning position. Um, now we do get another fire, but he is giving us broadside, so we go ahead and switch to the AP. Uh, he puts out that fire, um, but it doesn't matter. There's four, you know, there's four of us left. The Mino is going to go ahead and get the Kraken. Um, but uh, we did a, a, good, a good portion of the damage, and the XP is going to, you know, show that. 32.59 there on, on uh, Capture the Base, and Capture the Base is a lot more stingy in XP because of the lack of defend ribbons and, and other things, but you can see me kind of, you know, shouting it on stream there, playing smarter, playing, you know, reading the map, doing everything that you need to do in a Battleship player, and your experience will be a lot more fun in Legends. Now, not every game we know this is going to go according to plan, um, but, you know, if you pay attention to the principles of the game and not just sit there and bow tank and bitch and moan at your teammates, you're going to notice a lot better results in your battleships. I'm going to be honest, um, I was playing the Iowa and New Jersey trying to do a little testing, and I just, the gameplay was miserable. Um, ships that are not maneuverable, such as the Burgoon, battleships especially, suffer so much in the current meta of HE spam uh, and overpens, and we know this. 
Um, but just sitting there moaning and not doing anything about it isn't helping anyone. Um, so we, we know that Wargaming could probably add a little less RNG factor into the game. But this is the game in its current state. It's probably not going to change. So sitting there and writing up a you know, paragraph fa Facebook posts is, is not going to change anything. Um, try, you know, try and position better. Try and play in divisions. Try and just be an overall better team player. And that's my message to you, Battleship players. We already talked about it. I'll do a few messages for those useless cruiser players and the obviously useless destroyer players as well. But uh, for that, that is the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hey, run out. Peace.